All right, guys, we're back. Uh, just a couple of examples of some of our main components that we carry in our kits. We are the manufacturers of the Special Operations Forces tourniquet, and we are on the Gen 4 of the tourniquet. The main difference between the Gen 4 and some of our previous generations was we addressed some of the feedback we've gotten over the years about our tourniquet being a little bit more challenging when we're applying it in the one-handed self-application mode. So the modifications that were done for that where we lengthened up the windlass and skinnied it up a little bit and we added a temporary assistance clip. So now instead of having to manually hold it in occlusion and basically pull off this one fingered ninja move that you used to have to do, you twist, 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 get occlusion, you can drop the end of the windlass down, completely let go, it'll temporarily hold and that gives you your entire hand free to finish anchoring off the end. So those were the modifications that we did to help improve that one-handed self-application. Um, our flagship bandage has been the Elias bandage. It comes in a four inch flat pack, a four inch round and a six inch rolled version. And basically this is what it looks like when it comes out. Pretty straightforward, big white puffy side goes down to the injury round and round on top of itself and then it anchors in with the traditional alligator clips on the side. We jokingly like to refer to this thing as the ShamWow of trauma bandages because wait, there's more. It gives you the chance to improvise a few things. You can open the side and there's a couple of things in there that you can do. All of the gauze that is in here will come out and you can completely separate it from the bandage and go field improvise another bandage if that's what you need to do. This is not a hemostatic agent, but you can still use this gauze to wound pack. And then also we include a four inch sheet of visqueen so that you can go and MacGyver yourself an occlusive dressing if that's what you need to do. And then lastly, the pressure cup that is on the top, you can cut off and actually use it as an improvised eye cup if you need to. So that is the Elias trauma bandage. The other bandage that we have that I absolutely love this bandage is the blast bandage. And this is a really good bandage. When it comes out of the package, you can use it exactly like the Elias, round and round on top of itself. But this gives you the ability to deal with very large wounds and that it opens up into a very large sheet. All right. So if you're dealing, and it comes with a very matching size sheet of visqueen, so much larger than the one that comes in the Elias bandage, you can put this layer over an evisceration and then cover it with the bandage. The other thing that that's good for is if you've got burns, you can wrap that limb that's been burned with this and then wrap the outside of this. And then also the thing that I have found this to be very useful for is encapsulating the end of an amputation. Um, instead of having to use all different types of bandages to try to figure out how you're gonna encapsulate the end of that wound, that's a really effective bandage for being able to deal with that. So some of these components go into some of our larger kits. And just as an example of a couple of the IFAC type kits, we have nylon versions and then to offer a little bit lower cost version, we have things that come in just a very, very heavy gauge Ziploc bag. So the standard IFAC, this is just an example, goes in a red nylon pouch comes in a black nylon pouch, comes in a tan nylon pouch. All right. Again, our tourniquets, our hemostatic agents, our bandages, and this can be worn on a belt, it can be mollied to a vest, it can be mounted inside of a vehicle, but this is a very standard traditional setup for most IFACs, individual first aid kits. And again, to offer a little bit more cost-effective version if that budget just isn't able to get you into this, we can take those effective medical components and maybe not be in as cool of a nylon bag, but it is a very heavy-duty uh, Ziploc, Ziploc bag. I'm sorry, I'm starting to stutter there a little bit. Very heavy-duty bag that holds up very well. You can put it in the map pocket of your door, center console, or in a backpack, things like that, and you've got a very well-equipped, cost-effective, set that you can carry around with you. So going from individual first aid kits all the way into a bag that I would truly classify as a mass casualty bag, we have our ARC kit, our active response kit. So the outside pockets carry a lot of gear, all right, that that individual wearer can make use of. And then on the back, there are two polis litters, and down the center, 
There are eight individual throw kits in this particular configuration. So it's a backpack that you wear in, you access your gear for you to use on people that you're trying to treat from these outside pockets, and we give you two evacuation platforms and eight individual throw kits that once you get on scene of a mass casualty incident, you can start chucking out trauma kits to people. The other option that we can do instead of individual throw kits is we can put a foxtrot litter down the center. And this is a rolled fiberglass litter. It can either go in the art kit or it comes with its own individual bag that you can carry it that way if you want. But what this will do is you can unsnap this, roll it out, and we made it pretty straightforward. You put the head where the head is, the straps are color coded red to red, yellow to yellow, green to green. You strap the patient in and then it's got your standard traditional handles for 321 lift, 321 lower type configuration if you've got enough rescuers. If you've got limited personnel, this is a really awesome feature right here. This is a lanyard and a harness that you can unfurl, strap the casualty in, get out in front of the casualty, put it over your shoulders and then drag the casualty behind you. So really, really awesome rescue platform for getting people off the X, especially if you've got limited personnel to be able to affect that rescue. Um, again, we've got a lot of other different types of products. This is just a quick hit and a sampling just to show you some of the stuff that we're trying to highlight here this year at SHOT Show. Uh, if you ever need anything from us, please call us at Tactical Medical Solutions. We're at 864-224-0081, and our website is www.tacmedsolutions.com. And I'm Lieutenant Dan. I cover the Southeast, but I'll be glad to help you out wherever you're at and make sure that we get you in touch with the sales rep from our area. So thank you for tuning in, and stay safe out there. If you like this video and want to support us, please check out the Millspec Monkey Store. Although known for morale patches, we also specialize in a good selection of DIY hardware and tactical accessories.